everybody, it's your boy Random News, and welcome to episode one of Cash for Kanika. Now in this series, what we're going to do is we're going to go around the internet, find uh, other frauds that are out there trying to capitalize off the death of this poor girl's name. Now this list that you see here, we're going to get to all these frauds, but today we're going to focus on Lovely the Great. Now the thing about this fraud, she's not lovely nor great. But she does love to spread fake news and false info because she does no real reporting whatsoever. So, let's go see what Lovely the Great has to say today about Kanika Jenkins and what lies she planning on spreading. And let's expose this fraud. Okay, so here's Lovely's YouTube page. And if you notice, she likes to post a lot of clickbaity titles. Most of her titles make Kanika look bad. A lot of them get on a mother, like she's going after the mother for no reason. And if you read some of these headlines, you shouldn't be talking like this about a girl that's dead, okay? And she doesn't care. And even when people debunk her videos, she keeps them posted. Kind of like the video we're going to go over today. Now, she knows this info is false. But if you go to her page right now, this video is still posted, okay? The title, Back Page Proof, Kanika Jenkins. Now let's see what type of proof and non-research your girl Lovely did today, and let's debunk it. Video, I was saying that I had found the um, back page um, ad of Kanika Jenkins. Um, I don't have any way to verify that this actually is an ad that she placed, but it does have the date on there of September. The six. This is the one that was, you know, floating around in the beginning, and it got snatched up. I don't know if the police removed it or who removed it, but it got snatched up. But somebody got a screenshot of it. And on the ad, um, you'll see where um, I'll read it to you when I pull it up. But um, so a lot of people were asking, or me in particular, I was trying to figure out why was the party, you know, even in Rosemont to begin with. And you got to think, if these girls were doing, you know, prostitution or, you know, um, those type of little parties or whatever, or orgy parties or whatever, where you can just pay to get in and do what you do or whatever, and even if you have the opportunity for it to be recorded or whatever, if they were doing that, most likely they're not going to do it in their hometown, you know. Just like a lot of strippers, they don't strip in their hometown, they strip out of town. In their hometown, they're just students or whatever they're doing. They 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 in college or whatever. They just single moms or whatever. But you know, out of town, they strippers. They do these other little um side jobs, these little jobs that to get little money or whatever. So that will explain why um the girls were doing the parties in a um hotel out of town. And you know, Irene almost told on herself on the couch when she was talking to um Zach. When she, when he was asking her about security and you know them letting them um, smoke and all that in the place and stuff, and she was just like, usually, she almost slipped and said, you know, like she done been there before, cause she tried. At first, she said she hadn't been there before. That was her first time going to that hotel, but she slipped up and said usually, but he caught her and he changed the subject, you know. So I mean, we know she done been there before. You can tell they've been there before just by the way they walked up in there when they first got there. Um, it's not like they were lost, like they didn't know where to go. They knew where the fuck to go. They knew where they were going, and they went where they had to go. Okay. Now, real quick, let's stop Lovely for a second. This girl just really came out of her mouth and said she can't confirm anything she's saying. Then she says that they're having an orgy party when it was a birthday party. Then she's claiming they've been there before with no proof whatsoever. She's not even from Chicago. And then she's sitting there telling you flat out that these girls are prostitutes. She has no proof to back any of this up, but let's continue. You know, so the reason that they weren't, you know, told to turn the music down or told to, um, or the police wasn't called about them smoking and they can clearly, you know, got complaints that they were loud and that they were smoking in the room and stuff like that is because they're regulars. They come there all the time. They probably break the um, security guards off a little, little change or whatever. You know, too, that's part of what they do. That's part of the hookup that they have at the Crown Plaza. So that's why it was there. That's why, you know, everything was overlooked, and that's why you got the big cover-up. The cover-up, why the hotel is covering it up, because they got dirt. 
them girls got lists. They got lists of who all, you know, their clients were. There might have been big people in the town or big people that came through the town or whatever. They get, that's why they all getting like a hall pass. They all getting a freaking get out of jail pass for this, this, what happened with Kaneko. That's why. There's no other reason. That's why the police are working so hard to cover up. That's why the hotel is working so hard to cover it up. Because there's, there's, you know, what was going, what was going on in that hotel did not just start that night. Now, what she's doing right here is called speculation and slander. She has no proof that they broke any security guards off. She has no proof of a cover-up. And now she's telling you that they had a client list of people they used to sleep with with no proof or evidence to show any of this. This girl is ridiculous. Whatever. So I'm going to show you the ad. Okay, so on the ad it says sexy, classy, and downright nasty. 19. For some for $200, I'll let you have all this. We'll be in Rosemont at the Crown Plaza Hotel. So meet up and beat up. Laugh out loud. Send me an email. I'll give you my number. After. No games, B. No pay, no play. And then it says posters age 19, location Chicago. And then it has post ID and it has some numbers and it has Chicago. This looks like a legitimate back page ad, you guys. I'm not, you know, 100% sure that this was, you know, her ad. But I see her pictures on there. So I assume that that's, you know, Kanika's ad. Now, we're going to debunk that BS in a second. But right here, she's about to show you a post made in a family group of Kanika Jenkins, supposedly. And we're going to see why she's really upset. She's upset because they won't talk about her. I'm not going to show the whole ad. You can pause it and read it. But here you go. This is from the, um, the family's group, the family's Facebook group. I'm not a member of that group, so I can't, you know, say what goes on in there. But this is one that someone screenshotted and posted in another group that says... Okay, my thing is they never address me. They never, not not me particularly. I know I'm just a little tiny little, you know, thing or whatever on the, the Kanika Jenkins Justice for Kanika thing. But my video that I posted back on November the 15th was Kanika Jenkins a prostitute. You know, was her, was her killer a client? It, right now, it has over 30,000 views. And I'm pretty sure at least one of those views were by a family member. Okay? But they never address that. They never say, you know, in one of those, you know, eight or nine little things they got on that page, they never, on that post, they never say, Kanika was not a prostitute. Kanika and her friends were not a prostitute. Now, how much of a clout chaser do you have to be? They didn't address me. Who cares if they addressed you or not? The fact of the matter is, they're not going to come out and address the fact that she was a prostitute when they know she wasn't. They don't owe any of you YouTubers any explanations for anything. They lost a child, they lost a family member, they lost a friend, and all you people are doing is sitting up here online making money off their name. Now let's show why this girl's crazy and why that post was completely fake. Now it took me less than five minutes to go on Google and debunk this girl's whole video. If you notice the girl in this picture, in the screenshot, it's the same screenshot from the ad she claims is from Backpage. Now this YouTube channel is from the channel called The Twerk Team. And this video's been up for a while. The title's Looky Looky. I'm muted, I'm gonna mute the audio in it because I'm not trying to get a strike or anything, but I'm sure one of these clout chasers will strike my channel because I'm disposing them for the, what they really are, and that's a bunch of frauds. But as you can see, that page was fake. This is where that picture came from, and Lovely the Great isn't great at all. She's a fraud, and she does no research whatsoever. If she did, she would have saw that this video was already on YouTube. People pointed it out to her in a comment section. Yet, the video is still posted. She's still making money off of false information. And she's not going to take it down. I mean, maybe after she sees this video, she'll take it down because she's been called out. But she already told you, she's a cloud chaser. She's making money. 
she's going to keep making money. And until she takes this video down, she shouldn't be out here screaming J4K because she doesn't want that. She wants the story. She wants to spread rumors. And she wants to keep making money off the death of a young girl. So, you're busted, lovely. Get over yourself and get off YouTube. I'll see you people in the next one. Peace. I am an investigative journalism in my head. I'm not, you know, certified to do it or I, you know, whatever. But I do do it. <laughs> so.